welcome back to my channel it's a horse thing so if you guys did not watch my repaint materials video and you're at all interested um please go check that out or if you just like the model horse topic in general check it out anyway um in this video however i will be going over model horse tags the kinds of things I use for my tack like this. I also have used it for my briar over, you guys can't see them right there. <laughs> um, so it it is like leather tack, but I also have blanket tack that I do as well. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So I will be going over um, basically everything that I use here. This is a full tack set, except for the breast collar. I don't have that on here, but I did make a breast collar for my briar down there. The first thing I'm going to say is Rio Rondo, um, which I will put Rio Rondo right here because when I watched Sugar Rose Studios and she kept saying Rio Rondo over and over and I could not figure out what she was saying and they had to comment to figure out what she was trying to talk about. I'll put Rio Rondo right here. Go check out their website. They are literally how I am able to make tack like this. So since I am starting off by saying Rio Rondo, I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about it. So Rio Rondo basically makes miniature um, hardware is probably the best word for it. They make briar sized, they make schleich sized. I think they go from one nine scale, which is like traditional briar. They have one twelve scale, which is classic briar. They have one twenty four scale, which is schleich. They have 132 scale, which is stable briar stable mates. They're all over the place. So it really, if you need hardware for any size model horse, they're the ones to go to. So right here, I'll just go ahead and show this. Like these are jump rings. So jump rings are, my boy Patriot has a halter on right now. Um, so I, I did paint this ribbon by hand. Oh my goodness, his little, hold on guys. Basically, I don't know if you saw that, but there was a little metal hook right here. That was also by Rio Rondo. Um, but the jump rings, you know, are the little metal circles. But I have a bunch of sizes for those because some are better for the center of a breast collar. Some are better for um, a halter or a bridle. It kind of depends. Then I have stable blanket pieces, which look like these. Let me see, how close can I get here? How, how close can I get? Yeah, there you go. So that's what that looks like. Um, and so you have the middle buckle part for like the front, at least that's how I use it. And then you have the piece with the notch and then the empty piece and those go underneath and they um, stick together. So like this is one of my blankets and basically you would take this piece and connect it to that piece. My actual people who know about horses will know what I'm talking about. Then I also have stirrups, which they make like amazing stirrups. So let me see if I can show these very well. Um, I'm sorry because this is like not the easiest thing in the world to show. Anyway, that's that stirrups and I will show it on the saddle as well. So those are the stirrups, you know, you can see them. You can see them right here. Those are the stirrups. Um, amazing. All metal hardware, by the way. Uh, I have some English stirrup. Uh, no, I have Western stirrups in here as well. English and Western. I have Western breast collar, which, um, that's what that looks like. So it basically just has details in it. Um, these were the little metal hooks. Oh, okay. These were the little metal hooks I was talking about. Let's see, can that show up? Yeah. Um, those are the little metal hooks, which I will use on halters, I'll use on bridles. Um, I did use it on, oh, I used it on my briar. Um, anyway, if you guys can see it right there, there's a leather piece that goes from this jump ring. Oh, well, it came off right there. That thing, I was supposed to go to the jump ring on here, that has a little metal hook attached and i use that oh i also have western bits and i do have Eng english bits as well english bits you can see it right there right yeah see it right there these are all my different buckles so i have a whole bunch of different size buckles oh i also have my halter slot pieces hold on these are briar size halter slot pieces so these will be easier for you guys to 
see halter slot pieces right there and then buckles i mean we all know what a buckle is well, at least i would hope everybody knows what a buckle is i'm so sorry if you don't <laughs> that's, that's um anyway uh buckles i have them on the bridle you can't you can't even see it i have some on the briar you can see it right there on the bridle you could see the buckles right there and i'm so sorry that it's so blurry um so i'll weave those in i will make tongue buckles so i'll have a little metal piece that goes on a on the middle part of the buckle and then i'll put holes in the leather and it's a tongue buckle and it actually looks pretty good but enough about Rio Rondo, although that is probably like one of the most important parts of this video. I will go ahead and show this. So this is all my leather. I have sheets and then I have leather lace. The leather lace is also from Rio Rondo. So the leather lace is everything that's in bunches here. It's flat. Yes, it has to be thinned. I'll talk about that in a minute. This is all my leather sheets, which I have made some recent discoveries about this. I'm using finished leather right now. So basically I can't thin it. If I get tooling leather, um, I can thin it, which is what I need, but I didn't really realize that until recently. I do not have my leather thin me thinner on me right now, but it's just a handle with a little blade and you take the leather and you scrape it off. And after I thin the leather, I'll take some of this um, gum tridant or however you want to say it. And this basically, you if, if you guys have ever thin leather before, you thin the leather and then it kind of has like this fuzzy part to it um and it's just gonna be really messy and hard to work with so you i i will just like dip my dip my finger in here and then use my finger and rub it all over the leather i don't know if that's necessarily safe um but that's what i do and it works really really well um before i had that it was like incredibly hard to make halters i use that so much easier literally like changed that but yeah, if you do get leather lace, thin it now. This is just a Coke can. Um, so when I make saddles, I make the saddle tree with this. And it's just, um, you preferably like this. That way the seat is going up. And that's just a um, nice way to get something really, really sturdy. This is my pounce wheel, which I probably need something better. So basically it has it has little spikes in it. So you would take the leather and also why you want tooling leather and not finished leather. Finished leather, the holes will not go in it. If you get tooling leather, it will. Um, and you basically just run it over the leather and it'll look like it has stitch marks in it, which is kind of neat. And I really want to try that out. But again, I have not bought tooling leather yet. Um, basic wire is also just a good thing. I rarely use this because I just buy all my hardware. But if you do want wire, just get really, really thin metal wire, but thick enough, like go to a store and get wire. I can't tell you what the thickness is. Um, I mean, that's like my hand, I guess, if that helps anything. But you want something that's thin enough to where it'll look right on a horse, but thick enough to where it's not gonna bend when you try to do something with it. This is my leather stamp. So as a horseshoe on it right now, um, I don't remember how I use this because it's been so long, but I made a saddle. I think I wet the leather and then I pressed it in really hard and took it out. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> this is the wood, not a wood glue. This is the leather glue I use. Um, uh, Aline's, however you want to say it. Um, yeah, leather and suede glue. I do use suede, by the way. That's why my leather is colored. Um, this is... It does take a little bit to dry, which is why I'll also use super glue. But if you use super glue, your stuff is going to be stiff. If you're making something that needs to bend, like the saddle, take your time. Let this dry. It takes a few hours, but it's worth it because if you use super glue, you're not going to be able to bend it. If you use this, you will be able to bend it and shape it how you need it to be done. I'm now realizing how much stuff is tack. That was leather tack, okay, just so you guys know. This is what I use for my fabric. So that, yeah, more Aleens or however you want to say it. Um, this is my fabric glue. This stuff is so strong. It's amazing. Like I'm, I'm really not worried about any of my blankets breaking. Then this is kind of my whole thing of stuff. I basically have like little jewels. Um, I have 
where is it little white fluff this is basically just white fluffy yarn and i'll use that um nothing else in here is very very important um i do use this is all going to come out in clump i do use paracord <laughs> This is what I use for the outlinings of blankets and saddle pads. And it looks really, it is dyed with just some um, fabric dye because I had that laying around. I bought these little like fruit and flower embellishments off of AliExpress. And I'll use those in the corners of my blankets like the jewel. I love making polar wraps too because they're just so easy. I have a whole little thing right here. It's basically just elastic ribbon so it stretches. So I have like this print, this print, oh my goodness, I have so many, that, this, this is black glitter, yeah, black glitter, that one, and there's like a lot more in here, so I'm not going to take everything out, but I use those for polar wraps, and I'll just use like some thread, I'll either use my sewing machine, or I'll do it by hand, and I'll just sew up some polar wraps. Embroidery floss is also a big thing, I will also use this on my saddle pads and blankets, so like here's some white right now. I also have this gold that I don't think I've ever used. Um, I basically have a whole big bucket of this. There's like probably hundreds. It's probably more like 150 colors in here right now <laughs> because I was once obsessed with making friendship bracelets, which I do still wear some, um, but <laughs> I just have a whole bunch of colors from that. Oh, and I use embroidery floss to make my, embroidery floss to make my lead ropes and I use it with this. Um, you can basically look up how to make um, a lead rope and it'll show you. It'll have this wheel and have like eight slits in it. Or I can make a tutorial if you guys want to see that. So I think that's it for material specifically. So I, ha I also have this. I think this is, yeah, it's not wood stain. It's wood tint. Um, tattered Angels is what it's called. I rarely use this. I think I used it for saddle pads a while ago. Um, here's some thread that I have. Use a ruler. Sometimes rollers are gonna be your best friend. Just have one on hand. I have Gorilla Super Glue. I also have, um, I got this off Rio Rondo too. Um, Zuko Cement. This stuff is actually how I made my rope halters. I was looking for the name. Um, I would coat it in this and then I would make it and it like made the texture that I wanted. It's hard to explain. Um, I also have these white charcoal pencils. I also have a hot glue gun in here. And anyway, here's where the hot glue gun sticks. Um, I have this. I can't remember what it's called. I'm, try I'm trying to think. I got it off Rio Rondo as well and it basically just pokes a hole in something. Ow, it kind of hurt. That's kind of all my materials explained. It Leather tack is just something I really have to show you guys for you guys to understand. Um, I hope this made sense somewhat. If you guys do have any questions, please, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them, I promise. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button down below. Click the like button, leave a comment, and leave a video suggestion if you have any. Um, or another tutorial idea. I hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing, fantastic day. I hope I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.